All right, hello everybody, and welcome to another, uh, another this. We're doing this. What is this? Uh, this is called Saya no Uta. Uh, I have no idea what it's about. It's a visual novel yeah. game. We just, I was browsing Steam and found this game, and my name is Saya, so we play it. Yep. Uh, apparently it has some psychological horror and some, uh, gross scenes. Oh, hey, Britain. How's it going? Welcome to the stream, buddy. Uh, so, yeah, this is gonna be fun. Let's get into it. This story is a work of fiction. The procedures and conditions here I described in, uh, the, they're imaginary. Uh, oh, no. This work of fiction contains gross text images that may disturb some viewers. Please select how you would like such images displayed. <sighs> Alright, so... You're eating Cheesecake Factory night? Nice. So I'm a bitch when it comes to gore and stuff. Uh... So, like... My... My, uh... My idea is to go here... Uh, but on the other hand, uh, like, we might be able to get more reactions if I just see it as is. Uh, we're gonna go with obscure focus, though, just to be safe. Because, recording. Yeah. Oh, good. Starting off strong. Oh boy. Man, I really hope this doesn't have nudity in it because I'm gonna get banned. It didn't have a nudity tag. Good. Hey, the wriggly mass of flitch burbles. Oh. I will. Once I get any sort of text, I will look. Oh boy. Oh boy. Three such creatures sit around the tables in front of me, slurping filthy sludge from their cups as they trade whines, growls, and sounds that I cannot describe. You have a doggo, I see. Neat. Oh! Oh boy. By listening carefully, I am able to grasp the gist of their conversation and respond when it is required of me. This is necessary to avoid arousing their suspicion. However, these creatures look. However, these creatures look. They are my friends, apparently. Oh, hello. That's Huxley. Nice. I wish that I could still deny it, but I gave up on that a long time ago. Night after night, I went to sleep praying for an end to this nightmare, only to wake each morning to the same twisted hellscape as the day before. Hey, Michael, how's it going? I now know that I have to blend in, that I have to act like one of them. Such has been my life these past three months, and so it will remain until the day I die. Oh. Oh, this is happy. I can already tell. Angst. Judging by its tone, this one must be Koji, and the one next to him, squealing more than the others, is probably Omi. Glad oh you're doing good, buddy. Which means that the one next to him. a different joke. Which means that the one next to me is Yo. Though I can no longer see any trace of her once attractive features, I try my best to ignore the rotten stench of excrement that exudes issues from her quivering flesh. Oh, this is gonna be a good one, guys. Two-time tunic! 
That's immediately what I thought when I saw me. Oh. oh, I can't wait for this. I can't wait for dinner! Yeah, isn't this just making you hungry? Everything has changed. Almost everything. By some cruel trick of fate, my relationship to the world alone remains the same. As if an insane architect took the blueprints of my life and rebuilt it out of blood and gore. But these monsters and I were part of the same college club. We studied together, ate together, we even went skiing together every winter break. Now these are but painful memories of days that will never return. If only no one recognized me, I might have been able to disconnect myself from the world. It would have been comforting in comparison to the belief that I had been abducted by aliens, or that I had stumbled through the gateway to hell. This is beyond a doubt the city where I was born and raised, the society that I was part of for 20 years, save that I, and I alone, can no longer see it that way. What the fuck have we gotten ourselves into? Like, for realsies, <laughs> what have we fucking gotten ourselves into? The world as I knew it is gone. I have no place to call home. Shit. Oh, I can't look at it. What the fuck? <laughs> yep, yep, nope, uh, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream! Anyway, I can tell that whatever they're discussing is of no importance to me. I decide to keep quiet while pretending to listen. But just then... Oh... Hey, Fuminori! One of the flesh beats says as it swivels its bloodshot eyes towards me. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? This is Sayanuta. Oh. I try desperately to suppress my loathing to behave normally, but my forced voice ruins the attempt. We'll talk about this year's ski trip. You're going to, right? I did not remove drink water. It's just higher up. A slimy hole near the top oh, near the top of the creature's rise, nauseating it as it vomits some semblance of words. That must be Koji's face, or what I would have seen as such three months ago. Unable to stomach the sight of it, I avert my eyes and give a neutral answer. I don't know. Water at some point. <laughs> yeah, that's not. You have other plans? <laughs> really? These were my closest companions. One of them had even wished to be more. How many nights have I spent crying in loneliness, lamenting the friends who no longer exist? Oh, good. Great. I'm glad so many. I'm glad so many of our viewers enjoy watching me suffer. I... I assume that's why you guys show up, to, to make me suffer. In three months my tears ran dry, and now there is only loathing left in me. Surrounded by hideous creatures that I can only assume are Koki, Omi, and Yo. No, but on the real, what the fuck is happening? Man, I don't know. I spend each day trying to act as if I always have. If I fail at this, I'll surely be sent back to the hospital. So, Only this time I'll be locked away forever. So our dude is, like, sitting here watching these grotesque creatures. Like, doing stuff and babbling incoherently. And they used to be his friends, and now they're not. And this is where we started. Yep, that's where we started. I don't know what's happening. No matter what, I won't let that happen. Apparently he was in the hospital. I mean, it's not like physical activity could affect your injuries, right? 
Ah, he got injured. Not sure. I'll have to find the doctor during my check. That's it. I can't look. That's it. I can't look at them or bear their screeching any longer. I jump to my feet, desperate to escape. Hey, Fuminori! A spray of stringy slime from the cilia around its voice box flies at me. Oh! I try to cover myself, but too late to keep the slime from splattering across my face like the yolk of a rotten egg! I'm about to lose it. I want to grab a tear, a desk, anything within reach, and use it to smash the life out of this creature, ending it all. I barely suppress the impulse. I mustn't let on that something is wrong. However they look to me, this is their world. I'm the outsider here. So yeah, this boy got fucked up. He, 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 he in the brain. He's not right in the brain. Like I said, today's my checkup. I, I've got to go. It's the skits. Maybe, man. Uh, Brenton, uh, Michelle is not going to be joining us on this. She would not. She would no. not. No. <laughs> Struggling to put on a smile, I reach into my wallet, pull out the first bill I find, and put it on the table without even looking at it. I don't care about the change. I just need to get out of here. Now. Later. I mutter hastily and flee the cafeteria. Yep, you're still here. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. You are crazy. Especially you, Nepa. Japanese. Hey, says Takahara Omi. Why don't we go somewhere we can skate for this year's ski trip? Sakuba Yo frowns at the suggestion. Skate? Tono Koji supports Omi with a laugh. Her impromptu suggestions are nothing new, and it's Koji's role as her boyfriend to provide backup. They're a good match for each other, Yo thinks. Sometimes it makes her jealous. I mean, she'd seriously never gone skating before I took her the other day. My God! <laughs> nope, you read the girls now. I can't do it. <laughs> Is it really that strange? <laughs> Why? Why are we reading this voice? Because uh, like it's not voiced in English. Do you want to turn the voices off then? Yeah, I might. Kodomo no koro wa nanto naku kowakatta no yo. Ano kutsu? Nanda ka hamo no mitai desu. Oh. But you picked it up just like that? That's pretty amazing, Omi. It's a lot like skiing. You keep your weight forward and use the angle of the shoe to steer. It's a bit like skiing, apparently. I thought I was going to try it. Then it was fun. Oh, that's the sound of the sound. Oh, that's the sound of the sound. Is this good for you? Is this a special one? I just do this now. He made it sound so easy. Because it was. To fit it all in. Oh. That's just how big I am. So it was a date. Yo feels a stab of envy. Koji and Omi enjoy their time together as normal lovers do. That's certainly not something that should make her jealous. It's just that her luck in love has been bad. <laughs> Oh, well, I want to see Omi skate, too. Yo keeps her voice upbeat, trying to cover up her disquiet. She knows that she admires, if not for the terrible tragedy that befell him. His is true misfortune. Her bad luck doesn't begin to compare. So... No, shut up! <laughs> but, oh, but you can skate at a skate rink, can't you? Why go all the way to a ski resort? I don't want to skate indoors. I want to skate outside, on the lake or something. That sounds fun, but won't it be crowded? <laughs> <laughs> While speaking, Yo sneaks a sideways glance at the young man sitting next to her. 
Although the conversation has only involved three people so far, there are in fact two couples at the cafeteria ba table. Yo's boyfriend, though, though there's still some doubt over whether he could be called that, is beside her, as silent and expressionless as a statue. Ah, we're seeing the non-fucking fucked up mental disorder injury view of it, things now. Nah, Fuminori. Hey, Fuminori, what do you think? Perhaps Koji sensed Yo's pain as in his usual quiet and considerate way. Oh Don't. boy. Oh boy, about what? The cause of Yo's distress, Sakizaka Fuminori, responds to Koji's sudden query with a vague mumbled question of his own. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're talking about this winter ski trip. You're coming too, right? Koji speaks gingerly, as though probing a tumor. A few months ago, he would not have hesitate, hesitated to rebuke Fuminori for his attitude. Their long acquaintance had forged a strong and honest friendship, but now... I don't know. Fuminori responds bluntly, his downcast eyes and sullen demeanor, making it clear that he has no desire to break his silence. You have plans? Yeah, Not really. Even Koji, Fuminori's best friend, cannot communicate with him as before. What hope does Yo have of breaking through his shell? The scars left by the events of that late summer day are still deep all these months later. Each one of the four bears them, not only Fuminori. Yo, no, you got it wrong. He's fucked up. He needs a hospital. I mean, it's not like physical activity could affect your injuries, right? Not sure. I'll ask the doctor during my checkup. As though that answer drained the last of his patience, Fuminori bolts out of his chair. Hey, Fuminori! Even Koji can't keep his voice from rising as he tries to stop Fuminori from leaving. Fuminori reacts swiftly, throwing his hands over his face as though to shield himself from th something terrifying. Maybe some split spit flew inadvertently from Koji's mouth, but that happens sometimes. Fuminori's reaction is beyond the pale. Like I said, Fuminori snaps, making no attempt to relieve the discomfort of his friends. Today's my checkup, I have to go. Even as he tosses money on the table to pay for his coffee, he acts like he's touching something filthy. Later. <laughs> Fuminori stalks out of the cafeteria, almost as if he's running away. Cloaked in heavy silence, the remaining three lower their gaze to the table, where they abandon 10,000 yen bills sways for lonely. F Fuminori's coffee is untouched. That's too much. <laughs> That's too much. Can't take this anymore. Omi says with a sigh, but Koji shakes his head reproachfully. <laughs> I kind of want you to do all the voices and I do all the narration. <laughs> sure. Alright. Yay. Fuminori just needs a little more time. But it's been three months. What's his attitude? I feel like I'm going crazy hanging around him. Hey. I don't understand what he's going through either, but don't think any- I don't think any of us can. Can you imagine losing your whole family like that? That would screw anyone up. It could have happened to anyone. A tractor tra- Oh boy! A tractor trailer flipped over on the highway, crushing the Sakisaka family car into a twisted scrap. They said it had been difficult to tell the bodies of Fuminori's parents apart. Oh boy! For a while, it had looked as if there was no hope for Fuminori either. It was nothing short of a miracle that it was able to leave the hospital and return to her normal life. About that. It was worse when we went to see him in the hospital, remember? He was terrified of us, like he didn't know who we were. He even had to be tied to the bed. He freaked out so bad. Oh, uh, that would explain why he doesn't want to go back. I'm just glad he made there's still something strange about him. What's with the way he looks at us? It's like we're not even human. You got it! You got it in one! Cut it out, Omi. Koji says forcefully. Probably lets out of empathy for his friend, then out of consideration for Yo. While Koji's kindness makes her happy, Yo also knows that she mustn't take advantage of it. Fuminori is the victim, just as Koji said. He's the one who deserves sympathy. 
Yo's feelings for Fumin Fuminori are her problem, and no one else's. She doesn't blame Fuminori for not giving her an answer after she, she worked up the courage to ask him out. In fact, she thinks even more fondly of him for taking the time to consider than she would have had he treated their relationship casually. Apparently, the fact that Fuminori did not reject her was enough to make them a couple in Koji's and Omi's eyes. They had, they've had plenty of fun at Yo's and Fuminori's expense since. The truth of it, though, is that he still hasn't given her an answer. After revealing her feelings to him, Yo didn't see Fuminori again until a week later, and then she could only stare at his broken body through the window of the ICU. Oof. That's the big oof. And when he was finally released, after 50 days that seemed an eternity, he was somehow different. She's starting to doubt that he even remembers what she confessed to him before the accident. Now winter is coming, oh boy. And her feelings hang forgotten in the cold, lonely air. <laughs> Dr. Tanbo Ryoko has never had a more troublesome patient. Oh dear. Oh, hi. Any changes since your last visit? Yeah, it's done. No. His voice is hard and flat. His words toss carelessly into the air. It's like he's speaking to himself in an empty room. I'm gonna check something. Oh no. Okay. We're not quitting the game because I don't know what we'll come back. Uh, well, see, it occurs to me that hearing the voices is the only way to tell who's actually talking. Oh! You're right! Alright, so... Ryoku is a surgeon, not a psychiatrist, but even she can sense the thickness of the wall he has erected between himself and the world. Any nausea, dizziness, or hallucinations? No. While Sakisaka appears to be looking at Ryoku, his gaze is actually aimed at a fraction down and to the side. He's only superficially engaged in the conversation, when in truth it does not interest him in the slightest. Perfect rejection. Realizing that she can't interview him like this, Ryoko sighs and sets her chart aside. Sakisaka san. Mr. Sakisaka. Anata ga toin de uketa shochi wa no shinkei ingaku no bunya de wa sekai kechi ni sai sentan no chiryou deshita. Sono koto wa gozonji desu yo ne. There we go. There we go. All right. Go ahead. Mr. Sakisaka, the procedure you received at this hospital was the latest in experimental neurosurgery. We explained this before, didn't we? Treatment of the subdural hematoma through the use of micro-machines, oh dear, a procedure available in Japan exclusively here at T-University, had been the only way to save Sakisaka Fuminori from a cerebral contusion that should have been fable. Fate. Fatal! With any experimental treatment, there is always the risk of unexpected complications. Of course. Sakisaka Fuminori's lips twist slightly in what might be a bitter or mocking smile, but it is gone before Ryoko can discern its meaning. Normally, I would never say anything to frighten the patient. But there have been reports of serious neurological disorders post-surgery. We must continue to monitor your condition carefully. Oh. Hence these weekly checkups. If only we would take them a little more seriously. How was last week's MRI? Sakizaka asks abruptly, as if to catch Ryoko off guard. MRI, Magnetic Re Resonance Imaging, is a way for doctors to examine the brain in detail without opening the patient's skull. Surprised by Sakisaka's uncommon technical knowledge, Ryoko recalls his profile. The more you know. Oh, that's right. You're a medical student, aren't you? The kind of anomaly you're worried about should, should show up on the MRI, right? Did you find anything? Oh, no. No. There was nothing, not the slightest hint of abnormal activity. For a procedure with such a low rate of success, the results have been nothing short of miraculous. However, something still bothers Ryoko. 
She can't shake the feeling that he's hiding something beneath his guarded exterior. Some terrible weight on his soul, perhaps? But if it's an inorganic problem, then there's nothing she can do as long as he refuses to explain it. I'm fine. I've been on my own for three months without any problems. What could go wrong now? You finally snap and beat someone to death because they disgust you? Please, you know that continued observation is required after these difficult surgeries. You have to trust us a little more. I can't. I suppose you're right. I do want to trust you, Doctor. Can I come to you with anything? Yes, of course. Ryoka answers, smiling to cover up her irritation. Sakusaka asks exactly the same question during last week's visit. Well, then, let's pick up where we left off. Have you learned anything about Dr. Ogai? <laughs> <laughs> Unable to answer, Ryoka hardens the mask of her smile. As before, the patient is inquiring about someone whom he has no business knowing. If you don't mind me asking, what does Dr. Ogai have to do with your treatment? You just told me to trust you, and now you're keeping secrets? Ryoko is used to patients treating her with hostility. Some degree of paranoia is natural when dealing with a person whose mistakes could kill you. In Sakisaka, however, she doesn't see the anxiety that other patients exhibit. His demeanor is perfectly calm, almost like a detective questioning a suspect. He left this hospital some time ago. I've never had any contact with him myself. Do you know why he left? Yes, I believe it was personal. Ryoko answers smoothly, her earlier hesitation gone. Having decided at the outset to lie, she has no trouble doing so with a straight face. But why do you keep asking about Dr. Ragai? Are you acquainted? Did you know that the doctor has gone missing? No. Ryoko realizes that her answer may have been a little too quick. She should have acted more surprised. Whoops. I recently become close with a relative of his. It was she who asked me to find him. A relative? Ryoko considers this with a frown. I don't think Dr. Ogai had any relatives. Oh? Who told you that? Whoops! I heard it from a nurse. Ryoko replies, remembering that she just claimed to have no contact with the man. Whoops! I see. The doctor was famous enough to have nurses gossiping about him. I hear he was an unusual man. But no one knows why he left the university. <laughs> Ryoku falls silent, knowing that this isn't a topic she can brush away with a smile. Sakisaki seems to have finally grasped her mood, however, as his strangely stiff tone softens a little. Please, I have to find Dr. Ogai. There's a girl who needs him. Can't you help me? Isn't this something the police should handle? Although she makes it sound like the most obvious thing in the world, the suggestion is actually a gamble. If Ogai Masahiko's disappearance becomes a police matter, then the university will be investigated. Everyone who was involved in the incident will be at risk of exposure. Oh. Oh. And of course, that includes Ryoko herself. Oh. She knows, however, that Sakizaka is unlikely to go to the police. First of all, his excuse is obviously a lie. They already made sure that Ogai had no relatives who might come looking for him, which is why they could bury the truth of what happened. Oh, no. But then how did Sakisaka, a mere patient, learn about Ogai? I'd be happy to help. <laughs> but there's no word from Dr. Ogai since he resigned last April. I can only assume that he's gone on an extended vacation. I see. Expecting resistance, Ryoku is surprised when Sakisaka backs down. She's still worried about his condition, and the mysterious link between him and Ogai is only making her more uneasy. But as long as he doesn't open up to her, there's nothing she can do. After a brief pause, Ryoko writes progress good on Sakisaka's chart for today. I thought next week's appointment. How does 4 o'clock sound? Before she can finish, Sakisaka is gone. Gasp. Oh, we're back here. 
It looks like someone sprayed the walls with pig guts from ceilings to the floor. I don't like this guy's perspective. <laughs> what color should the walls of a hospital be? White, of course. And to the creatures of rotten flesh shambling around me, I'm sure this hallway looks just as white as it should. I know intellectually that the halls are white. I know that the flesh beasts that the flesh beasts are really human. I'm the one with the problem, and it's because I've accepted this that I'm able to lead something approaching a normal life. Good for you. Good! <laughs> Why the fuck aren't you getting help, though? You realize I'm perceiving this wrong. This isn't correct. I'm the crazy one. Even though you just said not that long ago that you're not crazy, but whatever. Even if my university's medical department is nowhere near as good as T universities, I'm still a medical student specializing in neurologically. I have a basic idea of what has happened idea to me, although it's hard to believe. This isn't a pathological condition. It's probably some sort form of agnosia, unlike anything that has ever been studied before. Is that why you don't want to say anything? The flesh piece, called Tombo Ryoko, said that other patients had developed neurological disorders after receiving the same treatment I did, so I guess I'm just another failure. Makes me want to laugh in the know-it-all doctor's face. Oh. That said, I don't blame the doctors who operated on me. After all, I do owe them my life. I know as well as anyone how low the chance of success was, and that I had no other hope of survival. I was unlucky. That's all there is to it. The point is that my condition isn't treatable. Oh. Just like someone adapting to a hearing aid or wheelchair, I have no choice but to adapt to this nauseating scenery. That's unfortunate. Of course, it's hard. It wasn't easy to resign myself to this fate. But now there's more than just despair. Even for me, there's a glimmer of hope. Keeping my eyes on my feet, I hurry home. So he's staying quiet because he believes that he can't be treated. Mm, right. I live in a quiet suburban neighborhood, in a house that's much too large for me alone. My parents, even unluckier than I was, died in the accident three months ago. I couldn't even go to the funeral for being in intensive care. Were they unluckier than you, though? <laughs> They're done. They don't have to worry about shit. You have to live in this hellscape. Were they unluckier? <laughs> I had to sell my father's business, but at least that left me with the house and enough money to live on for a while. Of course I'm sad. But the accident took more from me than my parents. In fact, being on my own has probably saved me. If they were still alive, my parents would never allow me to live with some strange girl. What? Welcome home! As I open the door, a bright voice greets me from the kitchen. The voice is beautiful and clear as a bell. Human. Its sweet sound washes the day's cacophony from my memory. She's the only one that's not human. Oh, absolutely! Absolutely! I'm home, Saya. Oh, hey, it's you! Yay! <laughs> Even the patter of feet coming down the hallway is music to my ears. Nowhere else in the city can I hear such footsteps. Only in this house with Saya am I so privileged. It is you! <laughs> You're late! I was a little worried. Sorry, I had to stop by the hospital today. Oh, that was today? In her smile, in the inquisitive tilt of her head, is everything that I have lost. Since my accident, this girl is the only person I've met, perhaps the only person in the entire world, who does not trigger my cognitive disorder. Yo, are we in Persona again? This, this is fucked up Persona. True, her skin seems too white, and the color of her eyes and hair is probably different in reality. But even so, her form is undeniably human. And it's not just her appearance, and her voice, either. As I bend down to take off my shoes, Saya wraps her arms around my neck and pulls me gently into her chest. Her skin feels truly human, not cold or slimy, and from her hair wafts a sweet, feminine fragrance. Oh, dear. In all the world, only Saya is pleasing to my five senses. And what's more, she smiles at me, embraces me. She knows that she is my salvation, and for some reason is happy that I need her. So how many red flags is that right now? <laughs> how many red flags? <laughs> all it, of them. Yeah, all, all of the red flags. If I had... need to stock up on red flags. <laughs> 
<laughs> we need to hoard some red flags for this game. If I had not met Saya, if I had been all alone in this twisted, filth-ridden world, I would no doubt have succumbed to the madness. It is no exaggeration to say that Saya alone is keeping me alive. What did you do today? Rip, yo. Worked on the living room. The painting's half done. And now I'm making your dinner like I learned from the TV. Sounds good. Like at least two red flags. It'll take a little longer. Can you wait? No! Sure. I'll do some more work in the living room. After I see the humming sigh off to the kitchen, I step into the living room. I realized one day that if the natural colors of the world were sickening, all I had to do was paint over them with colors that seemed pleasant. I cannot wait to see this from other people's point of view. <laughs> they are gonna be like, Hey, yo, how's it go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I went to the hardware store and bought every color of paint I could find. Then Saya and I tried different combinations until we found one that worked. After painting the bedroom from ceiling to floor, I was finally able to get my first good night's sleep since the accident. When we first started on the living room, Saya, unsure what to do with the curtains, just painted carefully around the windows. Without a moment's hesitation, I tore the curtains down and painted over the glass itself. Uh-oh. There'll never be anything out there that I'd want to see. And as long as we keep the storm shutters closed, the neighbor probably won't think anything of it. Dinner's ready. I wonder what she sees. Can you bring it in here? As she enters the living room with a tray of food, Saya sniffs the air. The paint smell doesn't bother you? Now that she mentions it, I suppose the smell of paint thinner must be building up in this closed room. It doesn't really bother me, though. There are far worse smells outside. Does it bother you? Nah, I'm a zombie! No, I'm fine if you are. Saya sets the food on the table. Unfortunately, neither its color nor its smell is at all appetizing. Not that food any elsewhere is any different. Thanks, Saya. As has become routine, I steal myself and methodologically transport the food into my mouth. The taste is as gut-wrenching as I expected, but it's not Saya's fault. I'm sure she made it exactly like the cooking show said, it's just that my taste buds can't accept it. It's not good? She asked hesitatingly. Mm. Well, mm. no. Lying won't make Saya happy. She knows about my condition. Don't worry about it. I'll make something different tomorrow. Sorry. You always go to the trouble of cooking, but I... It's fine. If I keep trying, maybe I'll find something you like. In my current state, eating is nothing more than an unwelcome duty. As much as I hate it, I need food to survive. If I stay alive, then perhaps one day, as Saya says, I'll be able to taste something delicious again. I met Saya, didn't I? She's gonna be garbage. She's <laughs> just gonna <laughs> shovel garbage. Just waste. Human excrements. Aren't you going to eat? No, I already ate. Oh! Another red flag! Put a red flag there! Don't! I'm not gonna do that. And all the time we've been eating together... We've been together, Sai has never once eaten with me. Another red flag. I don't know why she refuses to do so. It makes me a little sad. Still, I'm not about to push the issue. Not when she's putting up with all the problems I have. By the way, I asked about your father again. You did? Garbage seems too nice. It's probably human flesh. Nah, because the fucking people look horrible to him. So that wouldn't be it. It would have to be Saya. <laughs> Dr. Ogaya Masahiko is Saya's father and her only living relatives. That's not true. Saya has asked me to unravel the mystery of his disappearance. They still wouldn't tell me anything. I get the feeling they're hiding something. They are. Oh. I expected Saya to be a little more disappointed. You haven't given up, have you? 
No. Saya responds with an unreadable expression. It's not that. She gives a little shake of her head and smiles at me once again. Thanks for all you're doing for me. It's nothing compared to what you're do you've done for me. So Saya's a witch, right? Like, that's absolutely what's happening here, right? Uh, maybe. I thank her for the meal and set my chopsticks down next to the perfectly clean plate. As wretched as the tape was, thinking of the care that Saya put into it gave me the strength to finish every bite. Is it bath time? Yeah. Will you wash my back again? Oh my. Sure. Ever since I moved in, it's been like having my own wife. Saya, why are you so good to me? Is it truly what you want? What am I that you can give yourself to me body and soul? Is this merely sympathy? Do you pity me, the exile from society? Is that enough for you to surrender yourself to such mad desire? Are you so wanton? Saya is here. She is with me, now. Only in this moment is her existence certain. Only when I am joined with her can I believe. Oh. No matter what cruel fate might await me, Saya, there is nothing I fear more than losing you. Fuminori. Are you crying? Endurance exile cry! <laughs> I realize that my cheeks are wet with tears. Why, Saya? Why do you go so far from me? Fuminori. I don't understand it. I don't, but I'm losing myself to you more every day. I can't live without you, Saya. Red flag? I wrap my arms tighter around her, praying that our bodies will melt together and never again be part. What must I do to keep you with me? How can I repay you? Here it comes. Here comes the wham line. Keep holding me. Wham! <laughs> Zaya whispers into my chest. I want to stay like this forever. I won't leave you, Fuminori. Why? Why me? Because you're all alone. She says softly, gazing up into my eyes. All alone. Just like me. The sorrow in her voice resonates with my own. There's a deep loneliness in her eyes. A loneliness from which now springs boundless affection. You're all I have. In the whole wide world, only you will embrace me. My precious Fuminori. Just put another one up there. Just collecting red flags. Now I know. No matter what horrors this world unleashes upon me, all I'll ever need is Saya. Don't you feel special? <laughs> Yo was determined to talk to him today. That's a bad idea! Don't go to his house! Nothing will happen as long as she hesitates. It will only prolong her suffering. The time has come to show courage once again. Yo's fourth period on Thursdays is biology. This is her one chance to see Fuminori. As a required course with many students, the lecture is held in a large hall that can seat well over 200. But since the room is usually only half full, it's really difficult for Yo to find the seat she wants. Yo prefers to sit near the center, when it's easiest to hear the professor. Most of the students congregate in this area for the same reason. Fuminori usually sits beside her, although given the ambiguous state of their relationship, she knows better than to take this for granted. Still, she tries to save a seat whenever possible. The classroom isn't crowded today, so Yo is able to set her bag on the seat next to her without inconveniencing anyone. But when the professor arrives at the usual time to start class, there's still no sign of Fuminori. After waiting about 10 minutes, Yo scans the room fervently. Fuminori is there, sitting alone in the far back corner. Did he miss Yo when he came in? No, he couldn't have, and besides, no serious student would willingly sit so far away from the front. Feeling miserable, Yo slides her bag back over to herself. Oof. Fuminori is out the door the moment class ends. Yo barely manages to catch up to him before he disappears down the hallway. Fuminori! Fuminori jerks at the sound of his name. You would think she just screamed at him. Monica. What? He turns to her and asks reluctantly, That is that this? 
This is a look of hatred. That's what that is. Oh. Now that they are face to face, Yo is painfully aware of how much weight Fuminori has lost. His sunken eyes and protruding cheekbones are a far cry from the features familiar to her. She wonders whether he's under a lot of stress or perhaps not getting enough of nutrition. Maybe it's both. It's both. It's both. He definitely looks more tense than he should, afraid even, though of what she can't imagine. His eyes more restlessly from move restlessly from point to point, and he refuses to look Yo in the eye. It hurts to see Fuminori this way. What could have changed him so? Today, she reminded herself, rekindling the flame of courage in her heart. Um, I want to talk to you about something. Do you have some time? Yo, can we get some preempted Fs in chat for Yo's feelings here? Because they're going to die. <laughs> the courtyard is empty and silent. No one is willing to sit and chat in the cold November air. What is it? Don't you remember? Yo almost blurts the question, but manages to keep her composure. You've been acting strange lately. I'm worried about you. Well, a lot's happened. He smiles like it's nothing, but even that seems forced. He's even standing precisely one pace farther away from her than he used to. Is that really all? What more do you, more do you want? That's you, right? <laughs> Yo manages to keep from flinching at the harshness of his tone. It's like you're struggling with something. <laughs> Rather than answer, Fuminori grinds his toe into the dead grass at his feet. Fearing that her determination might flag, Yo lets the words come as they may. It's like there's a terrible weight on your shoulders, and it's slowly breaking you. That's how you look to me. Oh, really? Fuminori mutters through clenched teeth, no longer trying to deny it or change the topic. This is an even clearer signal of rejection than his prior evasiveness. But Yo's determination is strong. Today, at least, she won't back down. It's times like these, she implores, trying to convey the sincerity of her feelings for him. That you need your friends. I feel really bad about your parents. Oh boy. But you're not alone. You have Kochi, and Omi, and you have me. Oh. Yo can no longer stop the words pouring from her lips. She fears that if she does not unleash her feelings now, they will be lost forever. I think we can help you, so you don't have to deal with it all by yourself. Oof. Even if we can't do anything, just talking to us might make you feel better. I want to help you. We all do. So please, tell me. Stop it! Fuminori shouts, silence Yo's entreaty. She promised herself that she wouldn't back down, but Fuminori's expression is terrible enough to shatter her resolve. The look in his eyes is not anger or any other warm-blooded emotion. It's hate. Murderously cold hate. Come to think of it, I never gave you an answer, did I? Oh no. He remembers. He remembers and still he has treated her so coldly. This is all the answer she needs. If his words stab any deeper, she might very well die. I never saw you in any special way before. When you asked me out, I wasn't sure how to respond. Don't do it, boy. He's gonna kill her. I didn't know how I really felt about you then. Fuminori. But... Now I can give you an answer. I've had plenty of time to think it over, you know. Oh. I hate you, Tsukaba. <laughs> I don't even want to look at you. Oh! Don't cry, Yo tells herself, but too late to stop the tears pouring from her eyes. I suppose it's too much to hope I never see you again. We do go to the same school. Ah! So just make this the last time you speak to me, okay? Your voice makes me sick. Oh! Oh! How can you be so cruel? Yo whispers in shock and despair. To which Fuminori twists his lips into a malevolent smile. You should really try thinking for yourself once in a while. 
I bet it was Komi and Omi. Koji and Omi's idea, wasn't it? It was Komi's idea! Well, you can play it love all you want, but leave me out of it. Oh, this hurts! That's all Yo can take. Even after shedding tears in front of him, she absolutely refuses to let him hear her cry. Any disgrace would be preferable to breaking down here. So she runs, fleeing breathlessly from the courtyard with Fuminori's cold smile at her back. Oof. Oof. Omi was the first to catch sight of Yo and Fuminori leaving for the courtyard. Reluctant to interrupt him, but still unwilling to leave them alone, she and Koji ended up watching the whole thing from the shadows. Oh no. I that asshole. Throughout the exchange, Omi was clearly itching to jump out and punch Fuminori in the face. That probably wouldn't have ended with well. Knowing her temper, Koji kept firm hold of her arm until the end. If he hadn't, she might very well have done it. Fuminori leaves after Yo. His every step seems to take an act of willpower. Koji sighs heavily into the once more empty courtyard, but the bitter taste in his mouth will not go away. What's wrong with him? Even Koji cannot forgive Fuminori's treatment of Yo. However, the first thing that he feels is confusion, not anger. Koji has known Fuminori since long before college. Fuminori was never this cruel before. There's no question now that the accident changed him. Are you just going to let this go? I don't want to, but what can we do? Something besides watch! Omi shouts, her face red with fury. I won't be satisfied until I give him a piece of my mind. That won't make Sakaba feel better. But I'll make it. But it'll make me feel better. Yo and Omi are best friends, just like Koji and Fuminori. In fact, it was the relationship between Koji and Omi that brought the other two together. Omi's anger is only natural. I'm going to talk to him alone. You don't have to come. Oh, she's gonna die. You're serious? For real? <laughs> Take care of Yo for me, will you? She's probably really hurt. She'll need someone to be nice to her after she's done crying. Wait, shouldn't we switch jobs? You know how I am. If I try to confront... Comfort her. <laughs> if I try to confront her. <laughs> Did I mention I'm dyslexic? <laughs> yeah, you've got a point. Okay, uh, well, rip to Omi because she's gonna die here soon. Hey, anyway, just go easy, okay? End of the conversation before Omi's mood gets any worse, Koji heads off to find Yo. Cause like, she's gonna confront the guy, and what would you do if a shambly mess of thing is angry at you and wants to hurt you? <laughs> yeah! I feel awful, miserable, but also refreshed. I finally crossed the line. I knew it would come crashing down like this sooner or later. Having become unable to feel anything but disgust for other people, there was no way I could hope to maintain the relationships I had before the accident. Today's incident will definitely get back to Koji and Omi, and everyone will be convinced that I've had a major change of character. Honestly, I don't care anymore. At least I probably won't be committed for this. I just need to avoid acting any stranger than I already have. If this puts a rift between me and the others, good. The thought of all the stress I'll avoid brings a smile to my lips. I'm fed up with them sticking their noses into my life. It's like they don't care that they make my gut turn just by nearing me, near me. Like, they're gonna fucking know that! I've been terrified of them until now, but today I struck fear into one of them. In that sense, it's something of a relief. But I'm not entirely without remorse for what happened. The person I just demolished with the verbal equivalent of a nuclear bomb used to be my friend Yo. Even if my senses don't believe it, my mind accepts the theory. I don't have any particular grudge against Yo herself, and I didn't want to hurt her. In retrospect, perhaps, perhaps I should have just ignored her outright. Yo was an attractive girl. I certainly didn't think badly of her. To be honest, though, I was annoyed when Koji and Omi tried to stick us together. It felt like they were using us as entertainment, and Yo seemed totally oblivious to the fact that she was dancing to their tune. Her cluelessness was irritating. Oh. Still, I knew that none of them meant any harm. Back then, I didn't have any reason to hurt others just to get my way. If uh, having a casual relationship with Yo would keep our circle of friends together, I was willing to make that compromise. Oh. 
Now, however, there is no room in my heart for such forbearance. If merely talking to someone is an ordeal, then how can I be expected to show them kindness? These ruminations have left me exhausted. I want to return to Sai as soon as possible. To think about the packed trains and crowded downtown streets between here and home saps my spirit. Catching sight of a nearby bench, I sit down and close my eyes to the horrors of the world. I can do anything about the I can't do anything about the stink or the noise, but at least I can calm my nerves enough to rest. Yo. When I regained consciousness in T University Hospital Ward, the world was as dark as it is now. I had not yet recovered my sight, even though my eyes and optical nerves were undamaged. Must have been an after effect of the accident. I cannot wait to get a full explanation of what the fuck is happening to him. <laughs> Blindness was a shock, but now that I know that my suffering then was nothing, after all, my senses of hearing, touch, taste, and smell were all fine at the time. The really horror began when my sight returned. Yep, nope, that definitely tells me that... The one small mercy was that I was able to come to terms with the accident and my neurosurgery while still blind. I panicked when I first saw the nightmarish hospital and the blood-curling shape of the doctors and nurses, but I soon guessed the cause. It chills me to think of what might have happened if I had recovered my sight along with my consciousness, suddenly awakening in what can only be described as hell. I would no doubt have lost my nine instantly. So, that's a weird thing. He says all of his senses are affected by this disorder, but it wasn't until his sight returned that they changed. So it wasn't the surgery or the accident, it was something else. Soon my disorder spread to the senses of touch, taste, and smell. As it turns out, sight exerts tremendous influence over the other four. No, but okay. The, sight, the taste of my food, the feel of my bed sheets, the fragrance of my get well flowers, all became unbearably bearably foul as my eyes said they should be. Eventually, even when the doctor's voices became unrecognizable as human, I decided to kill myself. I didn't believe for a second that I could live in this new world. At least not until I met Saya. One night, while thinking of a painless way to die, I found myself succumbing to sleep. Drifting between the nightmares in my dreams and the nightmares of reality, I didn't notice her enter my room. Red flag. <laughs> oh boy! Like... So it's her. She's the cause of it, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The next thing I knew, there was a face staring down at me from next to my bed. The face was not covered in pus or slime, or earthworm-like feelers. It had a smooth white cheeks, round eyes, and a lovely little nose. All things I had never expected to see again. The face was that of a girl, undeniably human and positively glowing with beauty. <sighs> I sighed in admiration, savoring the first peace and joy since regaining my sight. She had not expected such a reaction, apparently. Aren't you afraid of me? Red flag. Okay, she might not be the cause, but she's definitely not human. No. She asked, looking at the clock, I saw that it was exactly three in the morning. No time for a young girl to be alone in the hospital. Perhaps she expected me to mistake her for a ghost. Oh boy. Man, for a med student, this guy's dumb. But I would not have cared if she had been a ghost. Either way, she was a godsend. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm Saya. I'm looking for my dad. I assumed that she was the daughter of a late shift doctor or another patient. It was unusual, but not unthinkable for such a girl to be wandering around the hospital. It's no fun if you're not scared. Wait. I cried desperate to keep her from leaving. It was only after she turned around that I realized that I hadn't thought of what she of what to say next. Well Her beautiful eyes drew me in, healing my soul to its core, though the white haze clouding my mind, I struggled to form a coherent sentence. I shouldn't do this to a girl, but you're the only one I can ask. No longer concerned with propriety, I let the words come as they willed. Strip. Will you let me hold your hand? That too. Saya looked confused at first, but then she smiled like she had just found a new toy. Red flag! Her smile was brighter than my memories of the sun. You're strange. 
she said, holding out her slender white hand. No one's asked me anything like that before. Oh boy. Ever so carefully, as though catching the snowflakes, I placed my palm against hers. I could feel her human warmth and the softness of her delicate fingers. She was there, just beyond the palm of my hand. Thinking back on the joyful tears I shed then, I know that this is the moment I was saved from my fate. This is the first time in weeks that I've touched someone and felt them as human. Huh? NANI?! <laughs> I can't touch anyone else. I was in an accident, and as a side effect of the surgery, I can't see people as human anymore. Alright, place your bets in chat. What's actually going on with this guy and what's going on with Saya? Place your bets in chat now. Mm How -hmm. mysterious. You're interesting. She's, she said, winding her fingers gently around mine. Can I come back tomorrow night? Yes, of course. But are you sure it's okay? Don't worry. She replied. The night belongs to me. Ooh. So, okay. Undead. I'm going with, like, fucking... Vampire. Shinigami or something. She yeah? Shinigami, maybe. Like, he's, like, teetering between life and death, and that's why the world looks like hell to him. Mmm. Possibly. But why would she say her dad's the doctor? I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. I'm... I'm going with, like... I'm going with, like, vampire or ghost or... Yeah, uh... maybe ghost. And so our, our rendezvous began. Sai so came to my room every night at 3 a.m., skillfully taking advantage of the dirty duty nurse's get shit to. <laughs> I was astonished to learn that she was living inside the skillfully hospital. Skillfully taking advantage of the dirty <laughs> nurse's shit change. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big that I never run out of places to hide, she said, answering my surprise with a nonchalant smile. Sure. She had been living in the suburbs with her father, she told me, until one day he'd suddenly stopped coming home. Or, or she's like some sort of scientific experiment mm. made by the doctor. Yeah, maybe. After she had tired of waiting, <laughs> she's the phantom of the opera. <laughs> Saya decided one night to sneak into the hospital where he'd worked. And there she'd lived for over two months, searching for his whereabouts. All the while. Don't you have to go to school? <laughs> nah. No. Dad taught me everything I need to know. I'm really smart. She was a strange girl. On the one hand, she looked and acted like a child. On the other hand, she was remarkably self-reliant and, at times, exhibited a sharp intelligence and deep knowledge that many... <laughs> <laughs> She's just a horse. <laughs> I didn't care. Sai was the only other human in the world gone mad. Her existence meant far more to me than the standards of society. Aren't you worried that you might get caught? Nope. I don't have to worry about food here. And it's a lot more fun than staying in Dad's house by myself. I don't have to worry about food here. Yes, there's a uh, there's cafeteria. I looked through the patient lists and found the ones who have mental problems. So I continue grinning mischievously. Sometimes I sneak into their rooms late at night and scare them. Even if they raise a fuss, no one believes what mental patients say. That's ten more red flags. Alright. <laughs> they just brush it off as a bad dream. Her confession reminded me that the hospital was famous for his ghost stories. Who could imagine that there was actually a real girl impishly roaming these hallways? 
So that's why you came to my room the first time? Yeah, sorry. Are you mad? While her pranks were hardly praiseworthy, I couldn't bring myself to scold her for the very thing that had brought us together. You shouldn't do it anymore. Will you come talk to me instead? Yeah, that's more fun for me too. With extreme care, I was able to conceal my sensory disorder. I was glaring obvi It was glaringly obvious that the doctors had no way to cure me, and the fact that I had undergone a still experimental procedure made me even more cautious. Why is it glaringly obvious that they can't cure you, my guy? Why is it glaringly obvious? I mean, yeah, it's not showing up in an MRI, but, like, still... As a medical student, it was easy for me to imagine how the doctors would react if they discovered that I was exhibiting such unusual side effects. I was not about to become a guinea pig, a mere specimen, and so I hid my discomfort and loathing behind a mask of normalcy, convincing the doctors that any signs of stress were merely a result of hospitalization. Yo, just because you're a med student doesn't mean you know how the fucking- <laughs> doesn't mean you understand how this shit works! This guy's an idiot. Saya was my support. Looking forward to it. Granted, he's not really in the best of places to be thinking, you know, rationally. Yeah. Looking forward to her nightly visits gave me the strength to endure my daily torture. Hope can make an enormous difference in a patient's progress. With the aid of my secret nurse, I recovered at the pace that left the doctor stunned. <laughs> On the last night before my release, I summoned my courage and asked her. Are you going to stay here forever? Yeah, I couldn't learn anything about my dad, but it's not like I have anywhere else to go. I guess I'll stay as long as I can hide. In other words, there was nothing keeping her- Damn it. Why not stay with me? I asked timidly. The questions took all the courage I had. Huh? My family's gone, so I have plenty of room. You won't need to hide, and it's not a bad place to live. You want me to live with you? I was too afraid to ask her what she thought of that, so I hastily offered a deal. In exchange, I hope you look for your father. I'll find him no matter what. I think that's gonna be hard, Saya said, looking a little embarrassed. Dad probably did something bad and had to leave the hospital. We can't get the police involved. You'll have to be as discreet as possible. Yo, what happened to this guy? This guy! Do you know what happened to him? What happened to this guy? <laughs> I'll do whatever it takes. I... Unable to control myself, I finally spoke the truth. I can't be apart from you. At first she looked bewildered. But after a few moments of silence, she said, Give me a little time. That night, she left my room earlier than usual. She left my room. On the day of my release, I managed to smile as I accepted the hideous, foul-smelling celebratory bou bouquet. The flesh beasts calling themselves Kochi, Omi, and Yo came to pick me up. Though they had come to see me many times during my stay, it never got easier to see my friends change so horribly. My sudden tears of despair grew, drew suspicion, but I managed to explain them away as tears of joy. While we walked to Koji's car, I looked desperately for Saya amid the grotesque scenery. Even as we drove away, I kept watching the hospital fade into the distance, praying for a last glimmer of hope. But Saya never appeared. She just appears in his house. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> She's already there. She's, uh, what's it called? Uh, a Tsukuyomi? Tsukigami? Uh. I'm unfamiliar. Uh. After Koji and the others dropped me off, I paused a while to regard my surroundings. I had lived my entire life on this block in this house. There was no other place that I could call home. But nothing was as I remembered. As I walked up the path to the front door and took in the yard where I had spent my childhood, I could feel those memories being defiled by the twisted, festering shapes around me. Inside the house, I found nothing familiar, nothing to offer me comfort and warmth. What I had once called home was now a whole other world.
I have no home. I whispered with a smile of self-pity. There was no there was one last stop to make, one last nail to hammer into my coffin. Yep, there she is! I stepped into the room that had cradled me from childhood. The walls were papered with human entrails, the bed a tangled mass of worm flesh. But none of that mattered. There, curled up on the bed like an abandoned cat, was Saya. As I stood there in shock, she looked up at me in a tiny, weak voice said, Can I really stay? Yo, how the fuck did she know where he lived? Hospital records. You right. You right. You right. You right. You right. I responded by sweeping her into my arms and bracing her tightly so that she would not escape. Saya did not resist. Like this. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. She made it to the house. We're gonna find out. We're oh, gonna find shit. out. Oh shit. Oh god. Oh fuck. When she arrives at the Sakisaka house, Omi first takes a deep breath to calm herself. Her anger does not vanish entirely, of course, but at least now she can hear herself think. Oh, hey, I can present her. Good. <clears throat> While waiting for a response from the intercom, she looks over at the patch of yards that she can see from the outside of the gate. Even Omi isn't normally one to complain from other people's housekeeping, but this is going too far. The grass is growing wild, and there are piles of dead leaves scattered everywhere. It doesn't just look untetted, it looks like an, an uninhabited ruin. It's still light out, but every window has a storage chamber tightly sealed. All my guess is that they've been closed since morning. What kind of life is Fuminori leading? Even if he's living alone, he can't neglect his housework forever. And is it just her imagination or just... Oh, no. Or does something stink like rotten meat? It couldn't be coming from the yard, could it? Here, you want this, this red flag? <laughs> yes, I need this red flag. Thank you. There's still no response, so she presses the buzzer a second time, and a third and a fourth. Finally, after this has gone on for over ten minutes, Omi loses her patience and opens the cover of the intercom. As she expected, the power had been disconnected. Womp womp! Oh no. Perhaps Fuminori has a good reason for shutting out the world, but Omi can only see it as a lack of respect for others. Her anger rekindled, she pushes the gate open and stomps through the yard to the front door. So she's dead, right? She is absolutely dead. She's, yeah, gonna die. Given the state of his intercon, she doubts that Fuminori will respond to a knock, so Omi decides to just open the door and go in shouting. And if the door is locked, she'll just have to... Surprisingly, the doorknob turns easily in her hand, and the rage Omi finds herself throwing the door open wider than she intended. Oh, please be the paint thinner. Her nostrils are <laughs> instantly assaulted by a choking stench. It's not paint. <laughs> Uh, what is that smell? As Omi stands petrified on the threshold, the cowbell hanging on the inside of the door chimes loudly. A moment later... Oh, no! <laughs> Omi can't believe her ears. The voice she just heard could not have been human, yet its innotations were too complex for any animal she can imagine. Is someone there? She calls out to the end of the hallway from which the voice came. There's no response. Do not want! <laughs> There's no response. Instead, she hears the sound of something soft and wet flopping its way deeper into the house. <laughs> Finding it difficult to place a meaningful image to the voice she just heard, Omi stares blankly at the empty vestibule. There's nothing there, not even Fuminori's shoes, which can only mean that he's still outside somewhere, wearing them. The house should be empty. But then what was that voice just now? Oh. 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 <laughs> I don't want this. 
Her anger has vanished as if it were never there. Nevertheless, Omi sets foot into the hallway, leaving the door open so that the cowbell won't ring. The floor creaks, setting her nerves on edge. Omi isn't sure why she's acting like a burglar, but something tells her to make as little noise as she's dead. She's dead. She's dead. She's dead. Oh no. She's dead and she's gonna be fed to him. Oh god. Happy little priest. <laughs> the potency of the stink inside the house makes the whiff she caught outside pale in comparison. It's sickening, like rotten fish guts. Has food been left to spoil in the kitchen? She hears a bubbling sound up ahead. Run, bitch, run! Stepping gingerly on the creaking floorboards, Omi makes her way to the end of the hallway. She finds rooms to both sides of her, one lit and the other dark. She chooses to look into the lit room. Okay, how does it look? In the kitchen, lit by what must be the only window in the house not covered by a storm shutter, the sound she heard was the pot boiling on the stove, and on the chopping board next to it, a butcher's knife and some half-diced carrots. A perfectly normal household scene, with the light of the setting sun making everything the color of decomposing fruit. Something's wrong. Who's cooking here? Where did they go? Is anyone I, here? I don't like the music. The music's not fun anymore. Omi calls. We're getting in immediately as she realizes that her voice is shaking. As her words echo vainly through the silent house, she begins to feel foolish and defenseless. Suddenly, she feels something cold seeping through her pantyhose. She timidly reaches down to touch her feet. Her fingertips come away covered with a viscous olive green slime, like the filthy water from a tank long clogged with algae and dead fish. The whole floor is covered with it. It must be the source of the stench. Why? Why am I playing this? Why are we doing this? Because <laughs> I paid 15 bucks for it. You did! Omi now wishes that she had worn her shoes inside. Manners be damned. And when she looks back ruefully the way she came, she realizes that her current position is not visible from the entrance. This kitchen must be where that strange no voice came from. Run, bitch, run! Whoa, oh, oh. Okay. Don't know what I did. Oh no, the next room is probably the den. As expected from the closed storm shutters, it's pitch black inside. Only wants nothing more than to flee the house than do it! But that would mean turning her back to the darkness, and that she simply cannot bring herself to do. Alright, show us. Moved by some irrational compulsion, Omi sets foot into the den. It is too dark to see anything, and the stink is far worse than before. She slides her hand along the wall, feeling for the light switch. Finding it much sooner than she expected, she flips it on like it's her last hope. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The colors. Oh, the colors! So many colors! The purple of... Oh... The purple of entrails, the brown of rotten meat, the crimson of flesh blood, the yellow of fat, these colors, and more than cannot be described, cover every inch of the room in maddening array. The colors say that all that needs to be said about the painter's hatred, malice, and insanity. You're reading a little bit into it, but... Uh... <laughs> Omi's... Oh, Omi's leg gives out from the shock, sending her to the floor. Slime immediately soaks through her jeans. It's cold trend drills creeping up her legs, crotch, and her neck. Her hand flies to her neck where it's greeted by another drop of chilly slime. Above her, something is dripping down on her head. Oh. Making, perhaps, the worst decision of her life, Omi looks up. The predator clinging to the ceiling, poised to leap upon its prey. She sees it in every detail. Show us.
<laughs> oh. You want to read that? Her mouth and nose are sealed before she can scream, and her belly is torn open as something enters the feast on her innards. She is dead. But by the time she feels any of this, Omi has already gone mad. I bite, I bit the bullet and tried to make the train, but the rush hour crowds were so bad that I had to get off halfway and walk. I'm running pretty late. Is Saya worried? Hey. I hope she's not mad. Look at it this way. At least Saya will cook him a decent meal. I pray to God not. I pray to God not. Oh. Ah. I... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. I don't like it. I just want to learn what the fuck's going on and then be done with this game. When I enter the yard, I realize that the front door has been left wide open. Light from the living room is seeping out into the hallway and hear what sounds like someone smacking their lips. There's... Oh. Oh. There's... There's also a tantalizing fragrance in the air. tantalizing I don't want to play this anymore mahogany is it Saya? I consider calling out her but decide to enter in silence instead something smells strange though not unpleasant the aroma is quite soothing in fact it reminds me of Saya's hair oh no at first I'm surprised by what I see in the living room the floor is covered with the the floor is covered by what looks to be some kind of grass, probably the source of the herb-like smell. And there are fruit or vegetable-like balls of varying size scattered everywhere. So our boy's gone. He needs to die. Our boy is gone. He needs to <laughs> die. Right? Die seems a bit harsh. He won't get help. He refuses to try to get help. And this is what he sees. He either needs help or he needs to die. Saya. Saya. Ah. Saya turns around, her eyes wide with surprise. She then looks away sheepishly like a child caught by at some prank. What are you eating? This is, um, well... She stammers, so flustered that I suddenly feel bad for sneaking up on her. Remembering that she has never eaten in front of me before, I realize that she must be quite embarrassed. Can I have one? Oh boy. I scoop up the closest fruit thing and pop it in my mouth, ignoring Saya's attempt to wave me off. It's a strange texture, soft and pliable. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> like a peach or a pear. When I... Bite into it with my back teeth. A succulent juice fills my mouth, combined with a sharp, strong fragrance. Mm, I don't like it. I don't <laughs> like it. I don't like this. How did you make this? What did you use? It wasn't hard. I just took it apart and melted it a little to make it easier to eat. It's practically raw. Oh. I pick up a different lump, this one consisting of fruity flesh around a hard core. Tearing a chunk off in my mouth, I find that it has a similar taste to the last one. Hey, are you okay? That's a... Yeah, even I can eat this. In fact, it's good. Really? At first, Sai looks dumbstruck, but then she bursts out laughing. <laughs> No, that can't be. What? I had a thought, but then immediately, like, decided it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thought that came to my head was that, like, Whatever happened to him 
turned him into the same thing that she is. But, like, he looks normal to everybody else. I mean, for now. Yeah, maybe it's like a slow transformation. Yeah. Uh, is this what you always eat, Saya? Yeah, though it's been a while since I've had one so big. I usually catch them in the nearby park. She eats children! She eats children! She eats children! Yeah? Is that a bad thing? Yes! <laughs> so I should stop doing that? Yes! <laughs> There's an impre oh my god, my boy's an idiot. There's an impressive nature preserve not too far from here. I never heard about fruits like these growing there, but, well, of course, they only look like fruits to me. They're really something else. Ask what it is. Ask what it is. Sorry, I already ate the best parts. That's okay. There's always next time. Now we can eat together. Yeah. Saya seems really happy. I'm happy too, of course. Eating with someone is much more fun than eating alone, and it makes the food taste better too. There's still plenty left. It'll keep chilled for three, for two or three days, though it won't taste as good. Then we'd better start putting it away. Sealing the small fruits in Tupperware and the large ones in pots and bowls, Saya and sto I store the remaining food in the refrigerator. Thinking for of tomorrow's dinner fills me with anticipation. I feel that little by little, I'm starting to regain the joy of living. Saya will guide me. With her, I can live on. Okay. Um. Yo. <laughs> I don't think I can play this anymore. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> I spent money on this. You did. You did spend money on it. <laughs> you spent 15 bucks on this. I did. Oh. <laughs> Alright. At the very least, I think that's all I can stomach for tonight. <laughs> for tonight. Yes. Alright. So. True, True Scary, Scary Stories, Stories Hospital, Hospital Edition. Edition. Chapter 4, The Monster in the Hospital. A medical, medical student relates his shocking experience. Will you believe him or not? Strange things started happening. That... Yes. Whoops, I hit no. <laughs> Alright, so that's all we're doing today. Uh, we'll do this. Uh, <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>